take three. If this one, if something interrupts this one, then I'm just not going to do this one because it's not meant to be done. So this one's going to answer some of the questions that was left off from the past one. So I get to the mental institution, get me in their slip-proof socks, yay, and for the first two days, I refuse to talk to anybody. I keep myself in the room, I lay in the bed, and I just, I'm, I try to sleep. Because I know eventually they have to let me out. So I thought. Two days go by, and then a nurse walks in and goes, you know, they can theoretically keep you in here until they think you're, you're, you're okay. And if you don't play by their rules, they can keep you a long time. Like, she said, so-and-so has been in here for almost two months. And as soon as she said that, I was like, Fuck. Like, there's no fucking way I'm going to be in here two months. There's no way I'm going to do that. So I was like, oh, fine. I was like, I gotta have to, I'm going to have to play by the rules because there's no way I can escape. I tried to contemplate that. And there's no way I could break the windows. Bulletproof, like, plastic glass with, like, metal bars. And there's no way I could scale to the building and go down, like, one of their damn window wiper things. And So I, I was like, all right, I'm going to have to play by the rules. Day three rolls around. On day three, I go to I go to breakfast. First time I've eaten in three days. I was hungry, and I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to, so I, I just walked in there, nervous as hell. I grab cheese and crackers, like they have cheese and crackers in the plastic wrap, so or whatever it is, plastic container thing. And I, I grab a bunch of the a bunch of the cheese and a bunch of the crackers, and I take it and I hide it under my bed. Because I, I didn't want to socialize. And so that's all I ate for the entire time I was there. Was cheese and crackers. More and more cheese and crackers. Go get it at breakfast. Eat throughout the day. Cheese and crackers. So I end up going to the meeting after breakfast. And she would say, Alright, say your name and say why you're here. And I was like, oh, I, was like I don't want to fucking talk. So it came around to me. And I was like, Hi, my name's Justy. And um, I'm here because they won't let me leave. And that's exactly what I said. And they kind of chuckled. And then it went around. and So everyone was telling their story. And I was just being quiet as a mouse. This, persist, this persisted for days. Of me not saying a word. Just going to the meetings. Eating my cheese and crackers. Well they ended up giving me a pencil and paper. Because I wasn't. I wasn't. Being. I wasn't letting my emotions out. So they thought I would do it on paper. Which they were right. I did. So I, I ended up, I started writing, and I was looking out the window, and I was like, somewhere outside of this window, outside of this mental institution, she's waiting for me, and I've got to get back to her. I love her, I miss her, and I want her back. I want to make sure, I want to know she's okay. I need to get back to her. So I was willing to do whatever it was going to take for that to happen. And I meant that. And I still do to this day. Anyways... So I started writing, and I wrote this beautiful poem, and it's the one poem she never got to read. You know, I still have, I found two-thirds of it um, that I copied in a notebook after I got out, so I'm hoping I can remember the last part of it, and one day I'll give it to her, because it was the best poem I ever wrote in my life, and it was the first one that I ever wrote for her. So, um, yeah, um... So where was I? So yeah, we, we, Friday rolls around. We had the movie night. I don't know if I already said that or not. Um, and here's the thing. I w the ratio was me, this burnout guy. Which, God, I hope he's still alive. Because, dude, that guy was... That guy could take a whole video for himself. I'll talk about him later. And then there was nine chicks. Well, I, I knew two of the chicks, by the way, that went to my school. But that comes in this play later. Anyway, so you can imagine the movie we watched Friday night was, or the two movies were, not really my first choice. Um, the first one ended up being Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. And you know what? I had been in there for five days, and I was okay with watching that. Because when you don't do shit for five days, watching a movie, it feels like such a privilege. And that's the whole thing. They try to make you feel like you're locked in nothing. So when they give you little treats... You feel so grateful, but really, they're just fucking holding you to... Anyways, 
So I watched the movies and go to bed. And Saturday, didn't really talk to no one. Did the normal routine. Go to meetings. Say, I'm here because of blah, blah, blah. And then, she, and then Saturday, she goes, um, you know, say why you're really here. And I was like, you know, I'm here because look at me. You know, my name's Justy, and, I, and it's not hard to see why I'm here. That's what I said. She goes, what does that mean? And I was like, look at me. There are fucking... There are cut marks all over my body. You can see them with your eyes. I don't need to explain why I'm here. And everyone was in the group was like, thanks for sharing. So Sunday rolls around. And Sunday they had a special day. A room that had a pool table and a ping pong table. And you could actually socialize. Well, of course me. No socialization. I went and I sat down. And I turned on the radio. Because there was a radio in there. First, as soon as I hit the on switch to that radio, the first song that played, the very first song that played was our song. You know, and as soon as I heard it, it struck a chord with me and I started to cry. Like, it was one of those silent cries, but I was just, tears were just running down my face. And I was just trying to hold it back, but I couldn't. And it was just, you know, like, you deserve so much better than me. After all the lies that I made you believe. At the end of the bed where your nightgown used to be. Anyways. So I was listening to this song and I was crying my eyes out. Because I just thought somewhere out there she's listening to the same fucking song. She has no idea where I am. Or anything. So. After being in there for two hours, they have a small group where they pull us together in the room and chairs. And and, they, and she goes, all right, we can hear. They're like, is there any one story you particularly want to hear? She said that to the group. Well, one of the girls was like, yeah, I want to hear his story. And she pointed to me. And the other girls was like, yeah, you know what? He hasn't said anything this week. I want to know why he's in here. I want to know what happened. And... And um, she goes, well, Justy, do you want to share? And I was like, no, not really. And the and the, and the girls were like, come on, like, please tell us. Like, you know, something's got you in here. Something happened. And, and you know, we're in here as a group. We're in here together to, you know, to to work together to improve ourselves. And, you know, ball, you know, like the whole. And eventually they coached me into telling them. And I told them everything. I was like every single detail like even details i left out from here because this is going on the internet i told them everything and the girls were crying and they were like oh my god that is the most beautiful thing and the most tragic thing and i was like yeah i don't know if she's alive or dead she doesn't know if i'm alive or dead i have no idea i have no way of getting in contact with her i have no idea you know if i'll ever see her again and they were just so touched by the story like they were really carrying up and crying and there were and two of the girls that went to school with me were like when we get out of here i want to talk to you and i want to know what happens and i was like all right like i want to know what happens too i want to get out of here i've got to get out of here i've been trying to do that all week so i could get back to her i want to get out you know and two days later I go by and finally i they, I, I go look. I was like, my midterms are in two days. I have to get out of here so I can go past my midterms. The doctor said, no, we can't let you out. I think you need to be here for at least another two weeks. And I was like, no, gotta do my midterms. At least let me out for two days to do my midterms, and I can come back. He goes, it can't do that. It doesn't work that way. And because I, you know, if he would have done that, I wouldn't have come back anyways. But anyways, ended up, you know call my father and my grandmother well they ended up coming to pick me up and you know and the doctor looked at them and goes he's going to be a repeat offender i can tell by his personality he'll be back and that's a shame and i just remember thinking you motherfucker why the fuck would you say something like that you don't fucking know me and there, and because he said that i never went back and i think that's why i never and anyways so i walked out of the building and I could feel the sun on my face. We walked to the car and rolled down the window and I could feel the wind and hear the wind in my ears. And I breathed in and I breathed out and I said, I'm ready to go home. And I remember thinking to myself, this is, I, you know, like I'm gonna see her soon. 
the for only thing on my mind was every mile that we get back towards Silva is one mile closer to me seeing her again. So every fucking mile that we took on that road was one mile closer to where I wanted to be. So I started getting happier and happier. And that's, that's where I'll cut this off for today. I know this is a short one, but I've recorded this one three times, so... Um, so, yeah, on my way back to Silva, hopefully things will turn out good, hopefully she's still alive, you know, this is what I'm thinking to myself at the time, hopefully she still loves me, because hopefully she doesn't think I just abandoned her, you know, because I, I fucking, there has been no other girl in my life, and oh, by the way, this is in key part, like, when I got out, I was a completely different person. I I was no longer the the gentleman the I was no longer the ice and she was the fire you know I was the fire and she was the fire when I got out of there I realized how far I was willing to go for her how far I was willing to go for love you know the I up to that point I'd never betrayed my father but in one night I went from the innocence of an honorable man who has never done wrong to all of this for love and I knew right then and there that there was nothing I wasn't willing to give up for love and once once I wasn't afraid to give everything up for love a whole new door opened up for me a door of hope and chance and opportunity with her but that comes later I will say that the story doesn't have a happy ending yet. Maybe one day it will, but I've got to fix myself, which I'm in the process of doing. So before I go, I'm going to show one thing. I don't know if I showed it on this tag or not, because I've done three of them. Um, does anybody know what that is? NA, Narcotics Anonymous. This is a little, um, I guess you can call it foreshadowing. Um, yeah, so I've been clean for 48 hours. I'm of everything. I've been going through withdrawal. That's why I've been all sweaty and my hair looks like shit and everything. Like, I've been going through some serious withdrawal. But I need to do this. You know, if I want to have a family, I need to be completely sober of everything. And that is hard for me. But that comes later. But I will say the reason I'm doing this is because of her still. Like, that's how much she influences my life. You know, last year, she said, you know, I don't like you smoking. That's not a good thing. I can't, you know, I can't, I, I don't, smoking's bad for you. That's all she had to say. I had been smoking since, well, you'll find out soon, but for a long time. And just because she says that, I quit cold turkey. Love is a powerful force, and you can use it to do good and bad. You just got to know the difference, you know. Just that little comment, and I was no longer smoke cigarettes. You know, and then last month she said she was moving. And I said, please don't go. I'm going to miss you. And she goes, well, come with me. Come with me. And every fiber in my body said, do it, Justy. Go with her. But my addiction said I can't do that because I won't have my, I won't have my feelings. I won't have what this is, you know. I won't be able to fulfill my drug addiction if I go. Well, now I don't have a drug addiction to fulfill. I should have gone with her, and I'm going to regret not. But, hopefully there's still going to be a happy ending between us. One day. I will never lose hope with her. Hopefully one day you'll understand how deep love can be. Whoever you are watching my pathetic videos. Alright, sorry for rambling on. But, so, any predictions about what you think might happen in my in my, this story that I'm telling of my life? Do you have any predictions of what you think, where you think this is going to go? Do you have any predictions of, you know, what you think she's going to say, where I'm going to see her again? You know, what I'm going to do when I get back? You know, how my father's dealing with all this? Because... Last time he seen me was whenever I was 
having martial art fight with my instructor with a freaking box cutter getting arrested. So what are your predictions about what's going to happen next? I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong, but it'll be cool to see if you are for yourself, right? Alright, well, have a great night.